Have you ever wondered how you could go really fast in the SAT math section? Or have you ever run out of time on the SAT math section? Or have you ever gotten so stumped on some questions that maybe if you just had five or 10 extra minutes to pour over one question, right? Then you could really get a perfect score. If any of that applies to you, in this video, we're gonna talk about some SAT shortcuts that cover some more challenging styles of questions on the test. My name's Brooke, I've scored perfectly on the SAT math section more times than I'd like to admit. As a student, as an adult, I've coached lots of students to perfect scores in the SAT math section. I have also created a couple of books for the ACT math section and a couple of online courses for the SAT and the ACT that you can check out. We have a TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all that kind of good stuff, so be sure to connect with us. We also have a totally free mailing list if you want to plug in and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome. Let's get started. So first math shortcut we're gonna do today is polynomial remainder theorem and long division questions. There's a really cool trick that you guys can do on these to be super lazy intellectually, and it's awesome. Okay, let's get into it. So the first question we're gonna to do today is from test number seven of the official college board test. So this is a polynomial division problem. I, I have some of my top students get stuck on these because they don't know how to approach it. They assume that it's gonna be like, oh, I factor this and then things cancel, which sometimes happens, but if you look down here, you see that there isn't anything else that's like just x plus 2. And that means that this is not divisible by this, right? So the divisor or this number on the bottom here, if you see that in a bunch of fractions in the answer choices, this is a long division question. That's what it is. It's never going to cancel out if you see all of these kind of remainder things over here. And if you guys remember polynomial division, right? If we do long division on a question like this, which is the traditional way to do this, by the way, and you can totally do it with long division and there's no problem with that, but I'm gonna show you guys a cool shortcut so that you don't have to do any long division, which is super awesome. But you can put like the x minus three over here and then you divide it in, right? And then you say x goes into x squared, x times, and then you multiply it out and then you get x squared minus 3x, and then I'm going to subtract, right, add, I change the signs, I add down, and then you bring down the x, the 5, and then this zeroes out, right? So you can do all this kind of stuff, and that's dandy and fine and wonderful, and then eventually what you get is, you know, I get 1 times x minus 3, and then I write the x minus 3 here, and then I flip the signs, and then I get 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So this thing that you get at the bottom here is the remainder, right? And you can put the remainder over the thing you divided by. And if this is confusing for you guys, just remember what you do when you divide with numbers, right? If I said five goes into 17, I would say three times, and then I would do remainder two. And I could also take that remainder and put it over the five and create a fraction, right? So that this would become three and two fifths. Everybody probably at this point knows this kind of simple division math. If you don't, thumbs up. But hopefully you know this kind of stuff. And so that's where our remainder goes. It creates this fraction, and the bottom of the fraction is the thing that we had divided by, or the divisor, whatever you want to call it. So when you see this, we know that that's a divisor. And basically what we know, when we look at a question like this, when the SAT gives us this question, I know instantly that all of these are remainders. And here's what's cool about this question. Do you see how each of these has a different remainder? This only works, by the way, you guys, this trick that I'm going to show you. It will only work if all of the remainders are distinct. If they're all distinct, all I actually have to solve for is the remainder. I don't have to actually solve for the answer as well, right? Now you can see here, I know that my remainder is negative two and the negative here and is the two. So if I did this with long division, this is fine. And I also got X plus one, which I just erased, but you guys saw that D is the answer. So I'm gonna verify now that answer by just going for the remainder using something called the polynomial remainder theorem. So. Let's talk about the polynomial remainder theorem. It's this theorem that basically states that if we divide a polynomial by x minus a, if we set x equal to a and plug it in, the remainder will be the result when I plug in a. So if this is, for instance, f of x, right, and I set that equal to that, if I do f of a, right, and I know that I'm trying to divide by this, x minus a, then that will give me the remainder, okay? That gives me the remainder. That's the polynomial remainder theorem. We're just gonna plug in here into this and we're gonna plug in x equals three, right? Because the idea is if x minus a is what we're dividing by, we want to plug in x equals a and that will give us the remainder, right? And f of a gives us the remainder. So that's the remainder theorem. The remainder equals the value when the divisor equals zero of the top thing, right? So. 
all I'm going to do is take 3, and I'm going to do 3 squared, right? 3 squared minus 2 times 3, and then minus 5. But that equals 9 minus 6 minus 5, and that's 9 minus 11, which is negative 2. Okay, so then I just look through these and I find that negative two right here. Okay, so I know it took a little bit of time to explain all of this, but the idea is that when you see these kind of fraction things and this number is the same thing you're dividing by, I know instantly that all I have to do to find this number up here is plug in, I set this equal to zero and I get x equals three and then I just plug in three for x on the top and I solve and I get negative two. So there you go. Polynomial remainder theorem, kind of cool, cool little shortcut. I don't have to do any long division. All I have to do is take 3, plug it into the top, and I get 9 minus 6 minus 5, which is negative 2, and I can basically do this problem in my head. Cool? Awesome. Okay, so that's my first shortcut, polynomial remainder theorem. Sometimes it comes in handy in these long division questions. Okay, so next kind of question I'm going to talk about, a shortcut for, is a kind of question called interpreting linear functions. What these questions are is essentially linear equations that map onto word problems. Remember our linear equations usually take the form of y equals mx plus b. And there's some shortcuts that I can teach you guys so that you can work your way around these problems really fast and really easy. I get into a lot of them in our online course. I have a nice video on this where I get in a much more in depth. I'm just gonna show you a couple of these really quick tips here on this particular question that can help you speed up the way that you approach them. Okay. So we have a school club has paid $315 for recycling C pounds of aluminum cans and P tons of paper. The equation 0.5C plus 60P equals 315 represents the situation. What is the interpretation of 60P in this context? So here's my first tip. Added items always share the same label. So here's what that means in this context. This chunk, this chunk, and this chunk are all going to have the same label. Up here really fast, really easy, I know this is dollars. So guess what that means? That means this is dollars and this is dollars and this is dollars. I'm gonna try to figure out 60p. Instantly I can look down, weight, no. Amount in dollars, yes. Weight, no. Amount in dollars, yes. So this is really fast, I'm going through that, but we're gonna go a step deeper. Next tip is that I'm gonna try to figure out what 60p means in this context. And then I'm gonna look at the differences between the two answer choices left. It says here the club is paid for each ton. And then I'm gonna get into my second tip. Whenever I see per for each or for every, I know that means divide. And when we have per for each or for every, it almost always indicates some sort of rate, okay? And rate is usually, and this isn't necessarily always, but usually the rate is the M in the MX plus B, meaning it's going to be some coefficient or number multiplied right next to a variable, right? Now, if I look down here, I don't have the for each or every, I just have four P tons, right? Do you see how I don't have the word each and I don't have the word every, okay? So that means if I want the total in dollars paid for each ton of paper recycled, I probably would use this as a rate, right? And that rate would be like M and then I would multiply it by whatever the bottom is. So if this says for each ton, then I would multiply it by tons and then this would be cost per ton, okay? And then my tons would cancel. And so this would indicate something that's a rate that's like cost per ton, but remember dollars per ton. Do you see how this is saying dollars per ton? Well, what did we learn from my first tip? My first tip was this has to be all dollars, this has to be all dollars. So that's not gonna work. So because this has for each or for every or per, I know it's a rate and it's dollars per ton and that is not dollars. So it doesn't match the label that I need. So therefore I know the only viable answer is D because this just says for P tons, not for each ton, right? And this makes sense that the amount that I pay for P tons because 60 is probably the dollars per ton, right? It's probably $60 per ton. And I'm gonna multiply that by P tons. And then my tons would cancel. And then this whole thing becomes something in dollars that's this chunk that I add, okay? So that might've been a little bit confusing and I get that it's a little bit confusing to some of you, 
but if you understand it, it can speed things up a lot. Granted, this is a little bit of a hack. You've gotta be a little bit careful with these kind of shortcuts and make sure that you didn't miss anything. But overall, these kind of little hacks can speed up your process and then you can kind of star this if you wanna go back and double check if you weren't sure about something, right? So my last tip for you guys is special products. Another speed tip on the SAT where you can speed up really fast is by knowing your special products. I have worked with three students this summer so far who did not know special products or did not recognize special products when they had a question that required them. Special products aren't just a speed tip, they're also a necessary tip in order to get questions right at all a lot of the time. Because some of the trickier questions that are polynomials that are toward the end of the test tend to involve special products. And these are our special products. I just cut these out of our ACT math books. If you didn't know, I have a couple of books for the ACT math section. If you happen to be prepping for that test also, you can check those out on Amazon. The square of a difference, the square of a sum, and the difference of squares. What I'm gonna focus on today is the difference of squares. Essentially, these are all factoring helps, right? That if I see this pattern, I know it factors to this. If I see this, I know it expands to this, right? And I can memorize that, and then I don't have to worry about FOIL, I don't have to worry about traditional factoring. Difference of squares is the one that comes up most often. Uh, basically what happens with the difference of squares is if I FOILed this out, I get a squared minus ba plus ba minus b squared, and these middle terms end up completely canceling, okay? So those go away because they're the same, and then I get a squared minus b squared. So that's how this happens. So it's not always intuitive to factor this into this, and that's why this one is the most important of all these to memorize. The thing about these two is you could always FOIL this and remember that that's what it is, but here, if you're given this, it can be hard to see that it factors to this. And that's why memorizing this last one is the most important. So we're gonna take a look at a question where this comes into play. But all of these special products are shortcuts that you need to know. You should know these like clockwork. If you don't, it's gonna cost you points. Okay, so here we have x squared minus two and we have x minus root two. And I can instantly see, I see the squared and I see this root and I go, oh wait, two is root two squared, right? So I know this is like, a squared minus b squared essentially over a minus b, okay? Because two is root two squared, yes? So I can see that right away and I know that's gonna equal a plus b because I know a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared, right? So if these multiply get together equal that, you can see how I can create this by dividing by a minus b, right? If I divide by a minus b, these cancel and I get this, okay? So I look at this and I go, wait, that's a squared minus b squared. Wait, that's a minus b. I can factor this to x squared minus two over x minus root two equals x plus root two times x minus root two. And all I'm doing here is this a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. And then I just put it over this then that that's gonna cancel. But when you know the special product, boom, this question becomes like totally easy, super duper easy. This should not be a hard question. You should look at it and know it and see this relationship right away. If you don't know your special products, you really need to learn them because they come up on a lot of questions and then they are like super awesome shortcuts and they help you even see the answer in the first place. They're not just a shortcut. It's like kind of the best way to do it, right? I hope you guys like these shortcuts for the SAT math section. If so, please check us out at supertutortv.com. We've got lots of resources to help you prep more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and good luck on your SAT.